and here we are. We're here with Barbara Macheski. Nice to meet you. Controversial, Slightly. you hope. <laughs> Topic matter is? Um, vaccine choice. Vaccine for or choice. against? Uh, for choice. For choice. Mm -hmm. Hold it closer. Just a little Hold it closer. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. What <laughs> is your life story? What would lead you to us today? Well, um, I'm not going to bore everyone with my life story, um, mm -hmm. but I will rewind to about three years ago. Um, I'm a, uh, you know, just a brief background before we start there. Um, I'm a mom. I have two children. I have a five and a half year old, and I have a three and a half year old Max. And where um, this story brings me here today, the story that brings me here today, happened three and a half years ago. Um, I delivered my second son over here at um, Princeton uh, Medical Hospital. Uh, he was six pounds, seven ounces, small baby, um, but he was nine on the APGAR scores, and for people that aren't parents, it's very high, healthy, um, well-cooked baby. Um, I did have an epidural, and I did have Pitocin, um, so it was but a pretty basic delivery. Mm. Um, 24 hours later, he was fine, he was sucking, uh, no problem, you know, taking in nutrients. 24 hours later, uh, and the nurse walked in and said, it's time to start his immunizations. And you just deliver a baby, and I really just hadn't been prepared. And I was like, immunizations? okay, is this what we do? And she said yes, and then I signed this piece of paper, which I will talk about later, um, to consent to give my child a vaccination for, um, against, the hepati against hepatitis. So mm -hmm. it's the hepatitis B immunization. Essentially, I inoculated my child against a sexually transmitted disease. The only way a newborn can contract this disease is if the mother is hepatitis B positive, or if they get injected with a dirty needle with hepatitis B, or they have sexual intercourse. So the there needle is, on with the mother is probably the only two choices. Yes, and okay. even the needle is so low in probability. Mm -hmm. It's ludicrous that this is what what we do here in Princeton of all places. Um, anyway, unfortunately, um, about 48 hours after he received the inoculation, um, he stopped sucking. Um, he became very irritable, became um, very lethargic. Um, as they were discharging me from Princeton Hospital, a nurse pulled me aside and said, I just want you to know his feeds have dropped significantly. We're going to discharge you, but please be careful. I was so anxious to get home. I'm not a new mom. I had already had a son at home, so I wanted to get home and start my life with my two boys. Um, so you get discharged day three. Day four, I called up the pediatrician. I walked in. I said, something's wrong with this child. Um, he was unable to eat. He was consuming no nothing. He was irritable. And a mother has a very distinct intuition. I knew something had gone wrong. Mm -hmm. I walked into the pediatrician's office with my baby in the, my hands, and I said, something is wrong with this baby. And they met with me. We changed formulas the first time I went. Then we changed bottles. We changed nipples. We changed diapers. We changed blankets. We ordered a white noise machine. We did everything. I got new blankets. I got the miracle blanket. I changed the detergent. For three straight weeks, my child would not stop crying. He would not sleep and Ooh. he wasn't growing. And we would go in for weigh-ins and he was not growing. It came down to me and a dropper, a dropper feeder. I was dropper feeding my newborn, desperate to make sure he was consuming nutrients. Finally, three weeks later, um, you know, as I was continuing to go into the pedi um, pediatrician's office. A lot of anxiety here. Terrible anxiety. You're right. a new mom, and you know that intuition that a mother has said to me, it put me on high alert. Something was wrong, and I'm not a panicky person. I'm very steady Eddie, and um, I knew something had had gone terribly wrong. Uh, you know, just in the essence of time, we were hospitalized. Um, he had turned yellow. His liver was enlarged. Um, his white blood cell count was through the roof. Um, I was actually across the street from Princeton Hospital. There's um, a pharmacy, and I decided I just had the wrong dropper. So I was actually in that pharmacy getting a larger dropper to feed him when I got the call that um, it's time to take Max immediately to the emergency room. And I said, well, I'm across the street from Princeton University Hospital. Let me run over there. I'll run over there. And the doctor said, no, this is more serious than Princeton can handle. I have already called um, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I don't want you to go home. I want you to go directly to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, you know, you know, part of the journey. I went into Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. We ran a series of tests. He ended up with a urinary tract infection. His liver was enlarged. Um, but the story goes on and on. And um, through a series of, you know, 
through over 18 months, um, we were in and out of Children's Hospital, Hospital for Failure to Thrive, gastroenterology distress. He had chronic diarrhea. He mm. had chronic infections. He was poor on, baby. He was uh, he was a very difficult baby. I ended up ha having to hire a full time live in nurse. Um, and if anybody knows what a live in nurse costs, mm -hmm. it's a lot of money. Um, mm. But I would bear. I would forego everything in my life to take care of this baby and I knew that this was bigger than what I could handle and my husband felt the same way so we just went and said this what is was what happening with do. the other kid how old was he he's he was absolutely fine um, he's they're 22 months apart um, and you know when we would ask him Gabe you know what do you think of Max and he would say Max cries like mm -hmm. that was <laughs> but that's all Max did Max did not coo like a cute baby nobody could hold him as a mother I could not hold him and feed him he uh, would constantly have these shrieking shrilling cries where he'd arch his head back and flail around and you couldn't hold him and I remember when we first hired the night nurse I said the only thing the only way he eats is if you bottle prop and you know as a mom that's like a big no-no you don't bottle prop they could choke they could, they won't it's bad 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 and I said to this nurse I said the only way this baby is gonna eat is if I do bottle propping. He it was like a Tasmanian devil almost. It was horrible my nobody no. could handle him nobody I exhausted my my nursing staff I exhausted them but we you know we, we muddled through a mother's love is you know we do what you have to do yeah do what you have to do um you know it was very stressful we you know 18 months not sleeping uh not thriving missing developmental milestones we had early intervention um he wasn't thriving at 18 months he was um and that's i brought a picture and i'll show it in just a second of him at 18 months old and he was completely disconnected and if you know an 18 month old they're toddlers they walk around they engage they know who mommy is they know who daddy is maybe they're starting to use words my son had no idea who i was no idea who I was and we um, thought you know what maybe this is autism maybe this is something bigger mm -hmm. let's take him in for a test and 18 months is pretty early to, to do an mm -hmm. autism evaluation but fortunately because we're here in Princeton um, we have so many great resources and I took him over to the Eden Institute right. there's a place called the Wawa house that Wawa was, it's called the, it's, uh, the uh, Vava the Vava house yeah, right. um, they were incredible they really know what they're doing over there they had a, um, a battery of tests that they ran I, I brought him in um, at eight and at the end of the evaluation um, at, they told me at 18 months old he was measuring at a seven month old level for social and emotional development. They said he's not necessarily, we're not necessarily going to put him on the spectrum as of this time, but you have good reason to be here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, all right. Were so, you suspecting so this comes back at the vaccine at this time? Were you thinking? Now, uh, it wasn't until around this time. At this point, I had no idea because we kept doing further inoculations. And, um, for what? Know, whooping cough, diphtheria? Um, uh, diphtheria, tetanus, mm -hmm. pertussis. Um, you know, we continued with the hepatitis B vaccine. Why? I still, to, the, to stay, don't even know. Hib. Um, yeah, I don't get that hepatitis. If it's sexually transmitted or a dirty needle. Oh, you, you had a daughter. I mean, I mean, she's how old now? Eight? Nine. I mean, nine. But I mean, I don't, I don't remember sure about, it might be it might I don't remember time, about that hepatitis B shot. It's uh, mandated. You can't get into uh, schools without it. Yeah. But I, I got it. Yeah, I got it to go into college. You but got it to go. Yeah. And I got it to go into college. And yeah. most most adults that are, you know, at, you know, between in their 20s and 30s, what have you, we got it when we got into college. But now they have put it on the schedule where you get it a day of life or in the first two months. Because of uh, is a national policy. But it's good, or it's this good is a national it's good policy. It's good for your whole life, though. It's good. Uh, that's questionable. Um, mostly, you do get boosters. They they say that'll hold immunity for five to seven years. And in those five to seven years, those are the least. That's the least amount of, uh, you know. A period of time where a child could actually contract that disease. No, so they're not having sex, and you're not going to be shooting him with dirty needles that much. No. And you mm -hmm. didn't have a, you didn't have. Um, I wasn't so hepatitis B well, positive. Oh, hepatitis B. I mean, okay, well, it, it is. I won't even look what he looks like now. For those two reasons, but from what I know of it, it's also, <laughs> I, like, in third world countries, you can actually contract from food or That's water. That's hepatitis A. C and but C. A and C, that's not hepatitis B. You do not contract hepatitis B. If you go on to the New Jersey State website, which is a great resource because this is the state that's mandating this vaccine, yeah. it's also saying it's a disease that can only be contracted through dirt and needles, sexual intercourse, and passing it to a newborn through um, an infected So there, uh, maybe there's such a fear about sexually transmitted hepatitis B they wanted to give people when they were young. Maybe. Well, Even you know, it didn't last that, the, no. the, what, from what I understand is that the reason why I would administer it to newborns is because the population that has a higher exposure to maybe dirty needles or you know a, a certain lifestyle, um, they're most likely to have that baby in with um, a doctor when they're born. 
um, for whatever reason, they're less likely to go seek uh, medical you know, oh, attention. Oh, I see. So, so, so try, yeah, try to cat, catch these kids. Catch them while they're in, you know. Right, right, uh, that's right, right. why, every, you know, there's But they should reasons. do it by case by case basis then. But you know, like. that would be profiling or, you know, discrimination oh, or, you know, who knows what. What I do know is that in other countries, the only babies that get that vaccine are babies that are born to hepatitis B mothers, right. period, end of story. But here in the United States of America, the biggest disappointment that I came to learn, we mandate it. And parents, and the reason I'm here today, because this is not a fun story for me to share. Mm -hmm. I don't like to revisit it. It makes me very sad. Um, I feel like I, I failed as a mother, um, and I don't like to revisit this time in my life. But I feel a certain sense of obligation to speak to my friends that are pregnant and to their friends and their family members and sh share my story and get them to understand to the, the facts about immunizations so that they have the education about the disease and how it's contracted and you know all the facts surrounding it so they can advocate for their children and make decisions that are in their best interest. But do you have empirical evidence? It's, uh, we haven't finished your story yet, but mm -hmm. I've been reading Mother, even Mother Jones, they said it's, it's really not true. There's no proof vaccines have done. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what they also said? Tobacco didn't cause lung cancer. Well, I don't know if that's a direct, you know, correlation to anything. It's I'm the not same saying, government I, bodies. And uh, I, Mother Jones? No, no, no. What I'm, I'm saying, oh. Mother Jones is getting her information from oh, the I same. Oh, I see. So you're saying the source is polluted. Entities. And the truth is, the studies are um, inconclusive. Um, you know, Bernadette uh, Healy, the um, former um, head of the National Institute of Health, is coming out and saying that the studies are insufficient. We cannot say that vaccines do or do not cause autism. We haven't studied it enough. We've studied. Um, basically, one vaccine, the MMR vaccine, which is the mo a lot of moms are up in arms about. A lot of moms mm -hmm. say that after the MMR, their kids uh, regressed into autism. So that vaccine has been heavily studied. And we've also studied one um, ingredient, which is thimerosal. There are 35, 36, 37 different vaccinations out there that our newborns are, you know, being given depending on what state you're, you know, are in. And we've only measured one vaccine so we can't we can't flat out say and i'm not one to say it does or it doesn't what i'm saying is parents deserve the right to know about each vaccine mm -hmm. so when they are asked to make the decision to vaccinate against the disease they're educated and they're not blindly signing this piece of paper which i i have to say um I'd love to hear what the University Medical Center of Princeton has to say about this sheet, which I think is a piece of garbage that I signed. Mm -hmm. It talks about nothing having to do with newborns. All it talks about is hepatitis B causes between 200,000 and 300,000 acute infections a year in the United States of America. What does that have to do with a 24-hour-old newborn? This is a fear-infected piece of of garbage. The only thing they say about kids is the pediatric, the uh, American, the American Acad Academy of Pediatrics rec recommends, recommends the Department of Pediatrics. Mm -hmm. Do you know when, what, what year was it? Like you said, you, know, you and I, you and I had, didn't right. get into college, so. I'm in, oh gosh, that's a really good question. I think it was 1996 when they added um, the hepatitis B to the yeah, immunization you schedule. Remember, you, you don't, you, I mean, do you remember your daughter getting that or? She probably did. I, uh, you know, she had to she, had, she was a premium. It was, it was a crazy time. So I, mean, well, so I mean, like, I mean, the whole thing with inoculation. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the whole because there is a movement. There is a, obviously. There I don't know. You know about and it. I'm just gonna say, I'm not trying to say you're wrong. Or, I don't yeah. know what to believe after a while. You know, because you, know, you see so many different reports. So many different. Yeah. But and you know what? It's not a matter of believing or making it polarizing and getting all worked up. Jenny McCarthy. Jenny so. McCarthy, and she should be worked up. We are parents of vaccine injured children. We're pissed. Off. Oh, can I say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can say fuck if you want. All right. I just great. Said <laughs> we're fucking pissed off. Right, right. I mean, we're mad. And we have every right to be because there's been an injustice done and our voices aren't being heard. Right. Doctors are saying, no, that's not true. Max was just failure to thrive. We don't know what happened. Um, and that will bring me back to my story is that when I started working with a practitioner, because there are more and more practitioners now that are listening to mothers, and I started working with a, a practitioner who said, you know what? This is a vaccine injured child. If you do one more inoculation for Max, he will suffer, suffer full and permanent brain damage. They said you this? stop right now. Absolutely. They well, yeah. How do they know this? Well, but well, you know, like, I'll tell you well, why like vaccination, second. I mean, one thing, you know, sort of like for both sides, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, with polio vaccine. I mean, mil millions of children have been saved from certain vaccines, smallpox, all those things. So vaccines have e eradicated a lot Absolutely. of things, obviously. And then, of course, they're you know, putting into third world countries. And that in itself, it, mm -hmm. it, there has been benefit. But, Absolutely. But the point is that there's also, 
I think one of the things we don't know. This you're is saying also one of the arguments that they're making, and I'm just putting mm -hmm. it out there, and I'm sure you've heard this a million right. times, is that what what percentage? I mean, maybe a much more percentage of children who are benefiting mm -hmm. from not being ill because of these vaccines, as opposed to before they got them. And I think that's a very okay. good point. Um, first of all, it, we're talking more about the abundance of the vaccines okay. and less about each different inoculation. I mean, <laughs> you know, we can't discredit the fact that we've saved lives, and you know, you know, the, the, the you know the polio epidemic has clearly been eradicated. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, newborns that are being inoculated against diseases they have no ability to contract. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 33 inoculations that our children in, this, in, the, in uh, the United States received before they're 15 months old. And when old. did all this start? Like, last 20 years? In more? the last, since 1983, we've gone from 10 vaccines before the age of 5 to 33 inoculations in under 18 months. So you're months. saying maybe this hasn't been thought out and no one really knows. But, I know. am saying let's slow down. We don't know if it's uh, a... Um, uh, if it pushes autism, asthma, ADHD, allergies, here's what we do know. We have a nation of sick children. We have peanut-free zones. We have kids having these awful anaphylactic reactions. Mm -hmm. Kids are sicker than ever before. Our, you know, nurses stations at these schools are just, you know, uh, are, they have medications. When I was in school, nurses stations had band-aids and a phone so you could call home if they ran a fever and a thermometer. Now we have all these medications and these EpiPens. We have a nation full of sick children that, and we don't have the answers. And we have a, a huge segment of the population of moms and fathers and parents and advocates saying, too many, too soon, my child was fine and thriving, mm -hmm. and I gave him an inoculation, a inoculation after inoculation, and then they started to trend downward. Let's stop arguing and let's say, okay, let's inoculate our children against diseases that are truly a threat to them. Let's spread them out. Let's reverse this. Maybe go back to 1983 and follow those, that schedule. And let's stop fighting and polarizing it. The truth is we don't know what causes autism. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's environmental. Maybe it's... It could be um, a combination of things. A combination. My yeah. doctor says it's genetics load the gun and um, vaccine pull, vaccines yeah. pull the trigger. Yeah, at a certain time in development. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, I mean, there was sort of one part of the catch-22 is that, you know, the, the infant mortality rate has, um, but I think it's decreased. Like less, less infants are dying today than ever before. But, but like you said, if the, the, it could be that maybe more infants are surviving, but what is the quality of their life? Right. What, right. How we, many and diseases are they getting? And unfortunately, that's debatable. Our infant mortality rate has not been very impressive over the last Compared to other years. first world countries, no. Okay. No, yeah, no not exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that's all debatable. But you know what? Just in the essence of time to get to where Max's story is today. This, I don't know if you guys, can, can they zone in on a picture? I have a cute little picture of Max at 18 months old. I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe not. It's no big deal. But it, you know what you'll see in this picture yeah, you can see it. if you yeah, you can see it. go go more towards Max. Yeah. Uh, way. You can kind of see it. Yeah, the the hat, not the um, with the hat in the blue, in the blue. blue. You'll see that he's totally disconnected. We were skiing in Aspen, 18 months. We brought our night nurse with us. He was still very, very sick, and that's the best picture we captured of him. But unfortunately, can you can't really see talking? it on TV. But um, he's out. He's just not there. My dad would say the lights are on, but nobody's home. Hi. Um, this is. A, what not, about your marriage? Was it tense on your you marriage? You know what? We, my husband and I, have a very st strong marriage, mm -hmm. um, but it You're was hard on us. We were both really sad. Um, we were just confused, but we were. We knew that whatever lot we had been given with this child, that we were going to. You're we a family. Were gonna, we're you're a family. family. Right, 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 together. right, right. I, you know, I grew up with a, you know, a um, neurologically impaired brother. So I knew what I, if this was what was going to happen. Anyway, after working with another physician who said this, he is having problems metabolizing the additives in the vaccines. We're going to detox. Oh, they, they, they could apparently they say that. They did though. because I caught it early. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, we started to, um, we put him on a special diet. We added supplements. We and put him on antifungals. His whole body was yeast, in, yeast infected. With Jeez, it, he was horrible. Nightmare, 18 months old. This poor he, boy. Or at 13, yeah, 14, I, I hate hearing babies have to suffer no, like this. But after working with this doctor who told me the truth, and this is the same time Jenny McCarthy's going through all of this, and you know, it was Katie Wright actually on TV who had said something. Um, we turned around and we made a, a remarkable recovery. Max is now thriving. This was, um, oh, sorry, this was this year. You can't really see it, but you get the. the oh yeah, idea. look at look, yeah, yeah. He's um, skiing he's and he's really thriving right now. He's staring um, right at the camera and he's joking around. He's joking around. He's doing jumps. You know, the, well, okay, maybe not jumps, but he's really having a great time. Um, he's doing fantastic in school. The teachers are really proud of him. I mean, he's small. I mean, he's rocking 24, 25 pounds at three and a half years old, but I'll take small. Um, so, you know, today he's doing great. 
and I'm so proud of him. Um, and that's he's talking. He's talking. Oh, he's he's got friends. He's social. He's engaged. He plays games. I mean, he skis. He swims. He so swam at two and a half years old. Uh, the reason th and the just because you stop the inoculation. We, what, what, what? we discontinued further inoculations mm -hmm. at this oh, point. Everything. For now. Okay, for now. Okay. For now. And um, that's, you know, we didn't do the MMR, which is the big one. That's a live virus. It's the measles, mumps, rubella. Um, and that could have really uh, set his, his uh, toxic threshold over, over the edge. Um, and for somebody like me who's come through this, un I mean, virtually unscathed, I mean, my, my, my soul, my spirit is a little fractured. I'm a little, you know, uh, upset about it. Um, it's very hard for me to revisit this story, but I think it's so important that parents hear me and mm -hmm. they don't abdicate medical responsibility strictly to their pediatrician that they ask questions and I'm, I'm making a formal request and I have already sent it out in a letter that the local pediatricians here in Princeton at Nassau Pediatrics and the pediatric group on Mount Lucas mm -hmm. please let's have an open dialogue with parents stop using fear factors that our kids are going to die if we don't inoculate the but Jesus is out of them. Well, that's what I've been reading about. That, 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 Too you know, many. Uh, yeah. oh, we're all going, all of our babies are no, going to die. There's outbreaks because the immigrants come in and there wasn't proper inoculation. You and know, yeah. and I, I just don't think it's fair. Let's start listening to the parents. We're scared and you're just add, adding to the fear. But the truth is this hepatitis B vaccine was not on the schedule, at, you know, more than 10 years ago. It's new. Let let us say no, maybe until we have to get it in, in school. What are the pediatricians? Are they, are they the treating you in a, in a condescending way or they just think you don't know what you're talking I've about? A lot of, um, oh, I've been all over the place here in Princeton. Um, they tolerate me. Um, they don't agree with me. They tolerate me because they saw how sick Max was, mm -hmm. and they saw his video. We yeah. put together a YouTube video yeah. um, that's been very popular. Over 20,000 viewers have seen it. Um, it's you can just Google Max Majeski. Um, so they how said do you spell last name? M A J E S K I. Majeski. And his first name's Max. It's Max Majeski. And they tolerate me. Um, I make their life a little difficult because I do share my story. And like I said, over 20,000 people have seen it. Um, I don't know if they're Princeton residents, but they make the pediatricians work a little harder. S let's stop fighting and let's come to a consensus mm -hmm. about at least the hepatitis B. Let, and if a child is clearly not thriving and they're After not hitting their milestones and they are developmentally delayed, let's let this one slide and let parents... Let's see what happens to the child afterwards. Let, let parents be able to sign a consent that says, you know what, I just am going to you know, forego vaccines at this time because my child is just not hitting their milestones. I want to know my child first before I give them 33 inoculations before they're 15 months old. Um, I think we have to start arguing and start advocating for parents' rights and the choices to protect our children as we deem appropriate. Mm -hmm. So you've made enemies probably the medical company, you know, <laughs> medical companies must not um, like you. You know, I'm probably not their favorite person, but I'm a nice person. <laughs> so, um, what about lawsuit? Of course, there's a lawsuit issue here, too. Right? Well, absolutely. You know, my twin brother's a lawyer, and I called him, and I was very distressed when I was going through this. I'm like, why did they do this? Why do they keep inoculating him? I, we gave Max, um, if you read his medical records, and I brought these in, yeah. just to the show you stack. that these are eight, this is 18 months of Max in a hospital. So over five months. inches of paper. And I'll yeah. tell you what, I'm 36 years old, and my medical records, after 36 years, aren't, aren't even close to being like mm -hmm. this. This is 18 months of him in and out of hospital. He got six inoculations at once, and I called my twin brother. I'm like, why would we inoculate a child that is clearly not thriving? Why did we do this? Why did I trust them? I just, and he, as a lawyer, said, there's lawsuits, and there's the malpractice insurance here in the state of New Jersey is Stuyhock, outrageous, right. and it's running doctors out of the state yeah, of New Jersey no, because they have to protect themselves. So, so if we're coming to a point, which is so unfortunate, where we're putting... You know, the, the legal system ahead of our child's health right. and welfare. Doctors are afraid of litigation. It's easy They're to give afraid. a shot. Right, right. And that's why I'm saying, well, maybe we can sign a consent form. You know, let's you come understand, to... And you understand? You, I understand the risks I'm taking by not inoculating yeah, right, my child right. against hepatitis B, and I'm willing to take that and risk. And the doctor is released. And the doctor just keep, keep practicing. I've been asked to leave different medical facilities, uh, different um, pediatric groups. Parents in our community have been given um, f these fearful letters from... Um, different, I won't name names, pediatric groups here in Princeton that say, if you don't inoculate, your child's going to die. And, you know, giving all these horror stories about the smallpox vaccine and, this, you know, the epidemic of smallpox. And it's very disheartening. You, we, we have parents that share my story, and I, I don't want to, you know, scare people from not doing vaccines, but I want people to take better 
initiatives to research and learn the facts about vaccines and the facts about these diseases. And, you know, your daughter is going to be up for the Gardasil vaccine in the next, when she's 11 years really, old. The Gardasil? Gardasil vaccine is also another vaccine that is really um, about a sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to make the decision. And you need to know that there are virtually no long term studies on the safety and efficacy of that vaccine. It's too then, new. Right. But are you going to be told that when you enter the pediatrician's office? I don't even know there's a garden film. That, you know. That's the commercial where they say, one less, and all the little teenage girls oh, are like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. there's been. Uh, numerous cases on girls that are uh, getting Gu Guillain Barr syndrome, which is paral partial paralysis. After, um, after and do you hear these stories? No. No, you don't hear about them. Well, you know, you, like they said, you know, you've sort of become, you know, controversial coming, you know, going yeah. to medical. Mm -hmm. Well, she's after thing. vested interest, too. Yeah, and well, I, mm -hmm. well, I mean, look, I mean, you know, I saw some part of the video, and mm -hmm. you, you explained what happened to your son. I mean, that is a, that is a, a parent's definitely worst nightmare, I mean, to see their baby suffer mm -hmm. through this. And, I mean, you know, I'm not a parent, but, you know, Adam, you are. You are a parent. Uh, well, what, what, so my, wife is, my wife won't let my daughter have sex anyway. She's going to be a nun. Or <laughs> she's gonna, but, uh, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm totally ignorant. You know, I'm more trust. I like. I was. I I'm did the like, same I'm thing. I'm completely trusting. I'm just like the course is going to happen. And you know what? I was too. And my older son had no problems. My younger son did. And now I've learned. And I want you to know, I would much rather be at my child's t-ball game right now, hanging out with the other moms. You know, having mm -hmm. some sodas, some pretzels, watching Gabe. You know, whack the ball a couple of times. But I'm here today because I care about children and I mm -hmm. care about parents. And I, if anybody, I, if I can just get one mom. To say well, I'm no think twice. Yeah, to I'm, hepatitis yeah. B vaccine. Well, I think one of the well, I think one of the other issues they have besides the whole obviously using the I, I know reading this the scare mm -hmm. tactics is that there's the fear that it's not even just a scare tactic. Oh, your child's going to die. I think mm -hmm. there's that fear of just contamination and of an epidemic happening because in Africa mm -hmm. they, they have started inoculations where polio has been completely eradicated mm -hmm. in certain areas, but then religious groups have come up suddenly saying no, this is he heathenness or whatever, and then so it's been stopped mm -hmm. and uh, so polio suddenly started spreading bringing up in right. parts of the world mm -hmm. where it has been er eradicated. So I think part of the fear from the medical mm -hmm. community is the fear of epidemic proportions yes. of disease coming back up. And I think that's a really good point. And I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that vaccines are all bad. There's clearly a place, but too much of anything is never a good thing, whether well, it's food or any sort of... What I'm getting is, is a whole new bunch of vaccines, and everyone's mm -hmm. giving them a clean barrel of health, and no one's actually said, hey, these are new. We don't know what could happen. Absolutely. Okay. We don't know the long-term ramifications. Mm -hmm. We don't know, you know, we haven't really studied all these vaccines in mm -hmm. their cumulative effect. We've studied them individually, and we've monitored kids for three months after the inoculation. But there's no, the um, data it's, is not, it's, it's hasn't not come there. in. It's not there. And you know what? There's two Ooh. There's too many children that are sick. There's too many epidemics in our society, and the boys are mostly affected, unfortunately, whether it's autism, allergies, ADHD. The, the boys, and I don't understand enough to really go further into that, um, but we need to unite as advocates. And Okay, we, we got the big signal. We could talk forever, though. It's very interesting. Okay. okay. What's the best clearinghouse? Do you have any recommend for websites if people want to do um, vaccines? I have a website. It's called too many too soon org. We're just getting it started where I have less aggressive vaccination schedules posted to give parents maybe um, an option. 1983 is up there. Dr. Sears, um, Dr. Stephanie Cave. Um, and I, just get educated. Dr. Sears has a great book. It's called The Vaccine Book. I feel like he's unbiased. He's factual. He's on point. And I recommend all expecting mothers to get the vaccine okay book and also to check out Max's video um, okay. just Google Max Majeski, Majeski um, on YouTube just Google Max on and YouTube and you'll see him mm -hmm. okay.